Comedies involving a central pair of main characters usually have one thing in common. Their premise is generally very simple. My name is Jeff. Take 1994's Dumb and Dumber, for example, the Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels all-time classic comedy in which two hapless, hopeless losers attempt to return a suitcase full of cash to its rightful owner, thrives on how simple both the plot is and the two main characters are. Swan Swanson? Swanson? Maybe it's on the briefcase. Look on the... Oh, yeah! It's right here. Samsonite. I was way off. The Farrelly's had an amazing knack in the 1990s for delivering comedies that were hilarious because they had a simple idea for the plot. Plus, they weren't really worried about upsetting anybody with outrageous sequences. Those were the days. You couldn't produce mainstream comedies such as Me, Myself and Irene, Kingpin, or There's Something About Mary nowadays for fear of upsetting someone. What is it about good sex that makes me have to crap? You really jarred something loose, Tiger. However, back in the late 80s, audiences and studios were a touch more liberal in their thinking, and the simple premise for a comedy was stretched into a high-concept idea in some cases. Thank you, Jack! Look, this is Jack's day. Why don't you just let Jack shoot me? Save your bullets. Jack, why don't you shoot me? Shoot me, Jack! Up until this point in the decade, Arnold Schwarzenegger hadn't starred in an out-and-out -out comedy. Well, not intentionally anyways. I'm not counting Hercules in New York, as though it's more or less a comedy, it featured an Arnie who was still coming to terms with his grasp for speaking English on screen, and it was very much a simple introduction to Hollywood for the actor. Isn't it enough that Hercules wrote in your chariot? You have been immortalized. I've been who? Before we continue with our video, here's a reminder to click the store tab on any of our Joe Blow channels and browse our collection of the latest and freshest designs in our merch store. Go get you some. There had been humor in his movies, of course, mainly thanks to those awesome one-liners in Commando and Raw Deal, for example. Let off some steam, Bennett. But he hadn't tackled a major star and role in a comedy yet. That was until the opportunity to test himself alongside a figurative giant in the comedy world came along. In 1988's Twins, the movie brought the unlikely pairing of Arnie and Taxi star Danny DeVito together as siblings, who were reunited at the age of 35. However, did the gamble for the Austrian orc to stretch his comedic chops pay off? or should he have stuck to impaling Aussies on steam pipes? Stick around to find out here on Arnie Revisited. My name is Julius, and I'm your twin brother. Oh, obviously. The moment I sat down, I thought I was looking into a mirror. Stick around. You should not drink fake. I'll be back. By the time Universal Pictures greenlit twins, they were under no illusion that the movie would be a guaranteed box office hit, as up until that point, Arnie was only a bankable star because of his proven track record for kick-ass action films. So, they took some insurance out on the film by agreeing with Schwarzenegger that he would voluntarily take no salary in exchange for a cut of the movie's profits. Both co-star Danny DeVito and director Ivan Reitman also made similar deals. Arnie was desperate to land the role of Julius Benedict in the movie because he wanted to break the perception that he could only be successful in action movies like The Terminator I'll be back. or The Running Man. I'll be back. The actor has always had an unwavering belief in his abilities, and if you've read his book, Be Useful, Seven Tools for Life, you'll know he has an unparalleled desire to test and push himself at every possible opportunity. Looking back on the film's production, during an interview in 2016, Arnie described the decision to drop his salary as one of the best in his entire life. You'll see why when we dive into the box office returns a little later in this video. As we all know, the legendary director Ivan Reitman sadly passed away in February 2022 at the age of 75. His wonderful career spanned several decades and he gave us gems such as Stripes, Ghostbusters and of course, the fun movie we're focusing on in this episode, Twins. Mm, roar no more. Jackety yak, jackety yak. Don't talk back. Money. He leaves behind a lasting legacy, and his leading man in Twins recalls the appreciation he has for the late director when talking about how he took a punt on the Austrian Oaks comedy chops when there was doubt in the studio's minds. Speaking shortly after Reitman's death, Arnie said that, if you knew him, Ivan had a way of making himself a part of your story, and he certainly wrote a chunk of mine. I'll always be grateful that he took a chance on this Austrian action hero in a comedy during a time when the studios just wanted me to focus on finding new ways to kill bad guys, blow things up, and show off some muscles. 
It was certainly a gamble to throw himself into an out-and-out -out comedic role, but Arnie has never been one to let other people's doubts get in the way of his ambitions. Reitman also took on producing duties on the movie, which was co-written by William Davies, Timothy Harris, William Osborne, and Herschel Weingrod. With Arnie locked, loaded, and ready to stretch those comedic chops, he joined an ensemble that was an eclectic mix of comedy veterans and excellent supporting and character actors. The other main lead was, of course, Danny DeVito as Arnie's slightly more diminutive twin, Vincent, who plays the perfect foil to Arnie's more statuesque Julius. Joining the lead actors is the great Kelly Preston as Julius' girlfriend, Marnie, Chloe Webb as Linda, Marnie's sister, and also Vincent's girlfriend. We also get Bonnie Bartlett as Mary, the twin's biological mother, NYPD Blue veteran David Caruso as Al Greco, a friend of Vincent's, plus smaller roles for the likes of Trey Wilson, Hugh O'Brien, and Tony J. There's also a room for a young Heather Graham to squeeze in a cheeky cameo as a young Mary Ann. The movie was mainly shot on location in New Mexico, with the American state providing backgrounds including the Rio Grande Gorge near Taos, the San Francisco de Assis Mission Church in Ranchos de Teos, St. Francis's Cathedral in Santa Fe, and buildings in Los Alamos. The original music score was composed by George Delarue and Randy Edelman. Edelman has scored three more films for the director, The Fun Ghostbusters 2 and Kindergarten Cop, plus the doomed Six Days, Seven Nights. I just want one goddamn thing to go right. Before Twins was released, Arnold Schwarzenegger was never consistently funny, and Danny DeVito had never got the girl on screen. It was largely a one-joke project that, in the wrong hands, could have ended up being a prize turkey for all involved. Arnie was desperate to prove the naysayers wrong, to show the world that he wasn't just a muscle-bound action hero who cracked iconic one-liners and bones, but not necessarily jokes. <laughs> The film has gained a cult status over the years, despite lukewarm reviews upon release. But does it hold up more than 30 years later? Well, the answer to that for this Arnie fan is mostly a belly laughing yes. Although it has some issues that stop it from being up there with Ghostbusters in terms of humour. That? That's my fault. It's okay, the table broke for fall. Or ruthless people for DeVito, while it does prove that Arnie can handle comedy. If you're lying to me. I'll be back. In the 80s, high concept films were in their heyday. If you could break down the premise for your new movie into just a few words and grab your audience instantly, you would be laughing all the way to box office gold. Wisecracking Detroit cop takes over chic Beverly Hills, a rugged Aussie crocodile hunter takes a bite out of the Big Apple, screenwriters would be urged to think in one-line pitches and have the movie's poster mapped out in their head while working out the plot of their next blockbuster. Twins fits into this model effortlessly, and the poster's tagline almost writes itself. The plot is therefore unique, but also fairly straightforward. A brilliant but naive virgin called Julius, and a coarse but endearing schemer named Vincent, find out their fraternal twins, and hilarity, mostly, ensues. You see, Julius was planned, grows to athletic proportions, and is raised by philosophers, while the orphan Vincent becomes a lowlife who is about to be killed by loan sharks, before Julius eventually finds his long-lost brother. The concept for the movie is preposterous, naturally, but the likeable charm of Arnie and DeVito carries it through, while the resultant humour being just about consistently funny enough to make it a worthwhile entry in the Austrian Oaks back catalogue. DeVito has been in better comedies, so there's no surprise that he excels in the role of a twin who finds out he was basically a mistake, with his brother getting all the good stuff while he got the leftovers. The plot could have gone off the rails once some stolen contraband is introduced, but director Reitman chooses to forgo the stereotypical Arnie movie traits, like shootouts and car chases, for something a little more nuanced. The choice to make Arnie's Julius a virgin is also quite clever, with a funny love scene with Kelly Preston on a motel room floor a standout scene. Ultimately though, the gags don't come as thick or as fast as the zany concept should have allowed them to. There's a nice nod to Arnie's rivalry with Sylvester Stallone, with the actor comparing his muscles to Stallone's in a poster for Rambo in one scene. However, one decent gag every so often isn't quite enough to elevate twins above anything other than being a half-decent comedy with some great central performances. That is a man with a lot on his mind. Twins was released domestically on December the 9th, 1988, opening as the number one movie with an $11 million haul on its opening weekend. It retained the top spot for the next two weekends, and went on to gross $112 million domestically 
becoming the fifth highest grossing film in the US that was released in 1988. The movie was released in the UK market on March the 17th, 1989, and also topped the charts, helping the film to an impressive 216 million worldwide haul on a reported budget of only $18 million. Arnie and Co. were certainly wise to drop their salaries in place of a share of the box office for this one. Critically, as I mentioned earlier, the movie received a mixed reception. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 42% approval rating based on 43 reviews, with an average score of 4.8 out of 10. The consensus states, though it offers a few modest pleasures for undemanding viewers, Twins leans too heavily on the wackiness of its premise to overcome its narrative shortcomings. The more traditional critics were also mixed with how well they thought the movie worked, with Empire saying that the humour when it comes is on par with Reitman's Ghostbusters, but the film feels, rather than the solid comedy it is, like a massive missed opportunity. More enthused was Roger Ebert, who gave the film 3 out of 5 stars and called it engaging entertainment with some big laughs and a sort of warm goofiness. For this Arnie fan, Twins was, and still is, a fun, serviceable comedy with a great premise that's let down by a lack of consistently hilarious gags. The cast are all great, and Arnie proves that he can handle comedy, with the impressive box office persuading the studios to cast him in more comedies. There's also been rumours, announcements, then ultimate cancellations of a sequel to the film, which, let's face it, is probably a good thing. Some high concept movies belong to the time in which they were conceived, as it were, so I think Twins should be left alone. However, as usual, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the movie, plus whether a sequel should ever appear, despite Jason Reitman claiming it's never going to happen without his father. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you wonderful action fans next time here on Arnie Revisited. Thanks for watching.